the headquarters of Libya's intelligence services, a notorious symbol of Gaddafi's 42-year iron fist rule, now firmly in the hands of rebel forces. This is the office of the man who used to run it, Abdullah Sunusi. He's one of those wanted by the ICC on charges of war crimes. Detailed reports on anyone opposing Gaddafi would come directly to this building. The primary concern for those working here was to quash any political dissent. Parts of the compound also served as a prison. Secret cells to house some of the thousands of Libyans Gaddafi's regime would make disappear. Here are just a few of the hundreds, if not thousands, of secret cells Gaddafi's regime used to imprison their opponents in. If you take a look inside, there's very little light. It's a tiny room. You could barely sleep in one of the directions. Um, and many would go missing. Hundreds, if not thousands, we're told, of loved ones would disappear. And you would never hear anything. It's believed, the rebels tell us, that this is one of the places where they were kept. If you look around you, the place has been ransacked after it was freed by rebel forces. This is meant to have been a bathroom of some sort. Um, again, you could barely uh, fit more than one person, but they tell us if you look at this one, for example, there's two mattresses here indicating that possibly two people were forced to sleep in such a tiny space. <laughs> Mohammed Zintani was one of Gaddafi's prisoners, jailed shortly after the revolution began. He was kept at the notorious Abu Slim prison, but rebel forces helped him escape when they stormed it a few days ago. He tells me he was imprisoned after he told neighbors that he supported the cause for change in Libya. We were eight prisoners to a room. They tortured us mentally, physically and psychologically. We would have a glass of milk between us and a slice of bread a day. It was torture, barbaric torture. But despite the building changing hands, it is still not free of prisoners. We're taken to see a captive from Mali, who the rebels say was serving as one of Gaddafi's mercenaries. Although his conditions are much better, his cell is air-conditioned and he's given food and drink, he hasn't seen a lawyer or been allowed to make any phone calls. His captors show me his passport. There is no sign of his entry into Libya. The only entry stamp he has is to Algeria, the country through which the rebels claim Gaddafi flew thousands of African mercenaries to quash this uprising. A few minutes later, and two more captives are brought in. These are Libyan soldiers who served for Gaddafi's son Hamis's brigades. They insist they killed no one, but the rebels claim one of them was manning a sniping position when he was captured. The building is full of thousands of confidential documents that could provide a valuable insight into what was one of the world's most secretive regimes. But it will take weeks to sift through. For now, it is a testament to how a largely untrained and amateur group of fighters managed to outsmart one of the Arab world's most feared secret services. Jamal Al-Shayal, Al-Jazeera, Tripoli.